Hello, beautifuls. Big heart hugs. We are talking all about empaths. I'm gonna share some perspectives, what I've noticed in working with people that are empaths and observing them, and also myself as an empathic person. I want to first start with what an empath is, and I feel like there have been multiple definitions, so I'm gonna sh going to share with you what my guides have offered me and what I've come to in my own experience. An empath is basically someone that has a higher sense of experience and feeling when it comes to emotions, whether it's for themselves, for the people around them, communities, whatever it is that they are exposed to. They have a higher sense to actually either feel that physically, to feel like attachments from actual thoughts and beliefs and programs, to physical sensations, emotions, the likes. We start to notice that an empath has a very large heart center. We all truly do have a very large heart center. However, an empath may be just simply more aware and in tune with this aspect of themselves. So this is a highly sensitive person, and this could also be just a very compassionate person, someone that can deeply understand because they can have a sense of feeling through the senses of what it is that someone else is going through, what it is that they're experiencing or witnessing in front of them. I've gotten many questions <laughs> about empaths and I wanna share a couple perspectives when it comes to knowing and identifying with being an empath. So me, myself, I don't necessarily label myself an empath. I feel I have empathic abilities. And I say this because I've reclaimed this empathic part of me as a gift, as a part of my psychic gift as a part of myself as a healer to offer for others and I've allowed myself to come into more sovereignty within that sense of power. However, I do feel that those of us that call ourselves empaths may feel very attached to the term. We may think that because we are empaths we need to look at things that are only geared toward empaths and this doesn't always need to be the case. I want to remind you that empaths being highly sensitive people, this is not any type of disorder. This isn't just one group of people that experience these things. This isn't something that needs to be healed or can't be healed, depending on how it is that you are looking at what an empath is and how you relate to it. So I want you to take some time to really tune in to see what does that mean to you? What does being an empath or identifying with being an empath mean to you? This will reveal so much about where this beautiful ability is actually coming from. I believe that some people are truly born with empathic abilities and this really heightens their senses and their psychic gifts. And this is a wonderful thing that we can gain from our soul, our connections, and also our ancestors. That's one perspective of being an empath. Another perspective is recognizing that really tuning into your empathic abilities is caused by your family system or your environment growing up being unstable or where you were in a situation that you had to read someone's emotions, their feelings, know what they're thinking so that you can act accordingly so that you can make sure that you are safe and you have stable ground that you are still in good standing with this said person or multiple people within your life thus creating an empathic ability to survive so this is more so a survival mechanism a protective aspect of self rather than something that is empowering this is something that is just keeping you safe, <laughs> just allowing you to recognize how this person is feeling so that you can react and respond in a way that keeps you safe, that allows you to have that sense of connection and belonging with that person. So some may see this as not really coming from a pure space of compassion and love because it is self focused, right? This is about you being safe, which I think is very valid. And I know that some people will be like, no, this is like a part of who I am. Yes, it is a part of who you are. This is an aspect of you. But I think it's very important for those of us that recognize if we have experienced hyper vigilance in our childhood that has caused us to 
develop this gift. And this doesn't mean that, oh, it's not good. It's not good for me. It's bad. I need to get rid of it. This isn't serving me. I need to be open and not do this to people or manipulate people in this way or, you know, feel so much of what people are feeling. You know, some of us really feel this as a burden. <laughs> and I wanted to remind us that this is not something we need to fear. This is something that we can develop to actually serve us right? To be able to sense and feel what other people are feeling is a powerful gift. And most, a lot of the world has been desensitized at this point. So your sensitivity is something that we want to anchor deeper into this earth, to really notice the subtle energies and connections of what is occurring at this time. So recognize if you are going into allowing yourself to develop and identify or attach however it is you do with being an empath, a highly sensitive person from a state of fear or from a state of love. So the way to really develop this is to first just bring awareness to where it's coming from. Offer love, connect to yourself, you know, there is no harm <laughs> and, and fear that needs to go into having a daily cleansing ritual or practice for yourself so that you are connecting with your energy, you're calling and claiming all of your energy back to you. This does not need to come from a space of here because you're an empath. No, this is because you really honor your energy your sovereignty, your power, your ability to embody what it is that you are here to embody, your authenticity, your expression. So this is an opportunity for you to create a more solid connection to your intuition, to your sense of being, to your emotions, to recognize what is yours and what isn't. And I know that this is something that I touched on a bit in my video that I did who knows how many years ago, <laughs> but you can check that out if you want to. If you are someone that is struggling with recognizing what is yours and what is not yours, this is an opportunity to go through those practices of cutting any cords, cleansing, calling your energy back, creating a beautiful grid of light or shield around your being so that you can connect to your connections, your multidimensional self, your soul, your heart, what you are feeling right now on a daily basis. Check in with you before you go check in with everyone else. And if you do not have that option, it does not mean that like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna know who I am. There's that fear coming in. <laughs> you are right here. You have the power to bring yourself back here and now to recognize when someone is speaking to you, sharing something with you, coming into your the field of your heart, if you are experiencing something physically, if you have thoughts starting to come in, whether it's instant or maybe after the meeting, because we can hold and connect or attach or have cords and ties with people that we interact with for minutes, hours, days, however long. So we get to use this as a playful practice to recognize like, okay, hey, as they were talking about their throat being dry, mine started becoming a bit dry. So then instead of attaching that to that and having fear about it, we can just know that this is going to pass and we can do a little practice, a little breathing to come back to ourselves. And as soon as that person is out of your field, that will start to dissipate, right? And I know that introverts may experience the sense of draining, right? If anyone identifies or attached to this term, I just want to make a note that you are so much more <laughs> than these terms and these labels, okay? You are so much more than that. This is just an aspect, uh, just like a little drop in the concoction of your essence, just FYI. Introverts, those that identify with that, feel drained when they are around a lot of people for a lot amount of time and they feel like they need to regain power, they need to refuel, they need to rest to feel recharged. So this is also a very empathic thing because you are experiencing and letting yourself be affected without fully allowing yourself to recognize what is yours and what is not yours, right? To recognize that you do not need to attach to everything that is ex flowing through you at this time. And this doesn't mean that you can just be an open vessel to anything, you have the choice to close yourself off to this. Just wanna let you know. Yes, this is your gift. Yes, this is something that you get to reclaim as a powerful aspect of self, but you can also close off to it. Every single psychic gift you can close off to. If you are really wanting to allow this to be 
a, an experience of unconditional love for yourself, this is an opportunity to embrace that part of you and to learn how to feel more stable in your foundation without it feeling like an earthquake, shaky, shattery, and just anxious overall. Meet those part of yourselves every single day. <laughs> and this will empower more deep protection so that you are doing it from a sovereign space, so that you're doing it from the aspect of self that feels strong, that feels connected to your heart. I know that for me, even in the moments where I may be feeling a lot of things, I just connect with my heart and I recognize like, hey, this is my intention. This is where I'm going, even though I'm feeling all of these things. It does not mean that I am, you know, doing this practice out of fear. This means that like, okay, I'm intending to do this out of love. So make that your intention, no matter what it is that you were experiencing. So I am so curious, your thoughts, <laughs> anything that you want to share. If you are in a state of kind of like flighty myths, a lot of like this air energy and you're not feeling very grounded, I invite you to tune into your roots, which is tuning into your values in your life. Take some time to connect with yourself. Check in. If you're feeling things, try not to just grasp onto it and attach to everything and follow all of the trains of thoughts. Just practice observing. Practice observing the sensations, the emotions, the thoughts that are running through you, the energies that are passing through you. Notice your reactions, your responses to this. Take ownership of those responses and move forward, reflect, journal on these things so that you can begin to regain that sense of centeredness and groundedness. And from that place, after you've connected to your heart, observed what's going on, I want you to ask yourself, what are your core values? What is your why for being here? What are you here to anchor in? What, are, what frequency are you wanting to emit when you walk into a room, when you talk to a friend or a family member, when you connect with animals and plants and walk on the earth? What is something you want to uphold throughout your entire life? So-and-so was always what? <laughs> right? What was your impact? What is it? What are your core values? This will immediately allow you to see a foundation that is aligned for you. And from there, you can start to pick up what is not serving you, move it along <laughs> and start to really start to water and hydrate yourself, support yourself. Support is such a big, big deal here. Create those spaces of support for yourself and allow it to not only be you, it can also be your guides, ancestors, source, God, consciousness, the universe, whatever name you want to call this great spirit, this life force energy, but also your community. Are they online? Are they in person? Are there specific places? You know, you can feel supported by specific environments. So get to know what grounds you, what assists you, what supports you, so that you have these reflections in these places to go to within yourself and outside of yourself so that you are anchoring into these foundations that do feel aligned with you without needing to feel like you're doing it all alone because you're not. You are not alone in this. <laughs> you are so beautiful, so powerful. Your sensitivity is needed. So now it's time to reclaim this part of ourselves as powerful and not just as something to fear or something that is just a makeup and a program for us that we are constantly feeling like we have to control. All right, no, we get to open up. We get to open up, we get to drop into the heart. So once again, comments down below, share your thoughts. If there's any other questions, if you want me to go a bit deeper into any protective practices, let me know, okay? I would love to share a few of those with my favorites. Also, please do like the video if this served you in any way and subscribe, that really helps me out in the channel. And I hope to see you in another video or in a, loving healing space or gathering very soon.